Now, hi guys, I'm Tanner, and I'm super thankful that you've signed up to serve with media here at ICC. One of the things that we kind of strive for here with our media team is just the idea of a godly excellence without a sense of feeling overproduced or feeling too out there. So just through these next videos, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about how to use some of the gear back there, including our video system, our sound system, and our lighting, just to kind of help you through this next season of serving with us at ICC. All right, and so now in this group of videos, I'm gonna teach you how to use our video projection software called ProPresenter. It's, and ProPresenter is what we use to control all of our screens on Sunday mornings. So this has our lyrics, our backgrounds, various sermon slides, any videos we play, Anything that's on our screens during Sunday mornings is, is played through these computers. So this right computer controls Barrett's teaching TV and the two screens that are hung on the, on the ceiling facing the congregation. And, and this is where we put um, all, everything the congregation sees. On this left computer is the computer that handles that back screen behind the band and the screens that only the band gets to see. So this computer is really kind of used just to help the band out. So go ahead and stick with me, and I'm going to teach you how to use these computers for Sunday morning worship. All right, guys. And so now I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to use ProPresenter. So ProPresenter, this little icon right here, and like I said earlier, is the software that we use for all of our projection needs here at ICC. So just in this first video, I'm going to talk a little bit about where things are placed and things that you're going to need to work with on Sunday mornings and things that you're not really going to need to mess with on Sunday mornings. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is this taskbar right up here. This taskbar is where you're going to find a lot of the functions um, that you're typically going to use in ProPresenter. So you're going to find things like how to clear all the screens, um, how to just clear slides, how to clear backgrounds, how to create any new documents. Some of these functions we're going to get into a little bit later, um, like song select and how we import songs, and this template in format and output tools right here. The very first thing that you're going to need to know about ProPresenter is that if this output is turned red and off like this, you're not going to get any signal sent to your screens. So if for some reason you can't figure out why there's no signal going to the screens, check this box right up here. Make sure that it's green. This section right up here is your finder um, and your view. Um, what this does is this tells you what's on your screen at your, at your current time, and this helps you search your entire library to find what item you're trying to find. This down here is your playlist box. This, um, this is where we keep our 9 a.m. service files and our 11 a.m. service files and some files that are just kind of loose. So we have our summer study file in the last week before we go into the 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. This entire section right here, I like to call your workspace. This is where all of your slides are in the entire program. And this is where you're going to actually click to actually fire them. In this part of the playlist right here, each one of these is a different item in the service. So we have our pre-scroll, our countdown, a couple of our songs, some welcomes, sermon intro video, giving information, announcements, and etc. And when I clicked on those, you saw that this box right here changed and it brought up what you clicked on into the actual work area. This box right here, is where we keep all of our video information and our media items. So this is where we keep all of our all of our extra graphics, all of our videos that we've used in the past, our countdown, and we have these little folders that are here to help you find like our summer backgrounds, our announcement folder. Um, this is where you're gonna find all the information um, that you're gonna be putting on your screens. And so now that we've talked a little bit about about what ProPresenter is in this, in, this, in this next video, I'm gonna tell you some things that you're gonna to need to know about how to actually run it on a Sunday morning. All right, and so now in this video, I'm gonna teach you a little bit more on how to use the, you know, the right side computer and what it actually does on Sundays. So, we're gonna get back into this playlist box right over here. 
And like I said in the first video, this is where all of our information and all of our items are for Sunday mornings. So this is, so this is where we have our scroll, our countdown, songs, sermon slides, videos, you name it. All this stuff lives in this playlist box. So we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the functions that you're typically going to find in the actual service. So we're going to talk about some things like timers, cues, um, and a couple other things in some pro-presenter language. So the first thing we're going to talk about is cues. A cue is this little orange mega horn looking guy right here. What a cue does is a cue tells all the screens in what arrangement it's supposed to be in. And the Pro Presenter is a very powerful program in the sense that it's able to have a different view for one video item and a different for another. So we use these cues in the way to help us tell the screens what we want on them. So if you go to the first slide of any one of these items, you're going to find a cue. And the way to get to that is you're going to right click and then you're going to scroll down here to add cue. So what this does is there's different types of cues. Is there's stage display layout and timer cues. And we typically put a stage display layout cue on every item in this playlist box right here. And we, and we typically put a timer cue on everything that's time sensitive. So this means various sermon, announcements, all of that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna walk you through how to change a couple of these cues. So as we can see right here on the first slide of this scroll is we have a cue right here. Well, I wanna make sure that it's the right one. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna right click again and we're gonna to go to add cue and say display layout. Right here is all of the different cue types we have. So we have cues for the scrolls, countdowns, songs, our host announcements, a special video countdown, testimonies, you name it. So every once in a while, sometimes cues don't save properly throughout the week, and we get here on Sunday mornings, and Robbie or somebody might tell you, hey, this back screen is wrong. Can you change it to the right cue? This is where you would right click, and go to add cue, stage display, and you pick what item this is. So this is a scroll, so we're gonna want the scroll cue. So we're going to click that. But if we go to another item, let's say the summer countdown video, we're not going to want the scroll cue right here. We're going to want a video countdown right there. And we're going to click that. And then for a song, we don't want a video countdown. We're going to want a song cue. Pro Presenter works in the way that it's gonna read the information from top to bottom. What I mean by that is, if there is a video countdown cue right here, and there's not a cue in the next item in the playlist bar, it's going to use whatever cue was already there. So we like to put a cue at the beginning of every single one of our items. So this, with it being the host welcome, we're gonna to go to add cue, and we're gonna put host right there your great name. We're going to go and we're going to add a song, because that's a song, and so on and so forth. All right, so now in this next video, we're going to talk a little bit about some cues and some more, and also how to work with our chord charts and our backgrounds for our songs. So as you can see with this song right here, we don't have a background or chord charts for this song. How you can tell that is if the first slide of the song is black, it doesn't have a background in it. And if you, and if you see these little white boxes um, and they're just white, you know that there's not a chord chart in it and it can't find it. As opposed to, if you look right here and how there's an image in the white boxes in this song, you know that the chord chart is there. But in this song, we don't have them. So what we gotta do is we're first gonna pull in a background. So what we do is, depending on what season or series we're in, we keep a folder right here in the images, 
of whatever season it is. So you can see that right here we have a summer backgrounds folder. And we are going to look and we are going to find which background we want for this song. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up this Summer Vibes 8 because I like it. And we are going to just click and drag it into the box like I did right there. And that's how you pull in the background. All of the other slides in the song can have a back, it can have a black background because ProPresenter only needs it on the first slide for each item. And so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add chord charts into the song. So now what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to click edit slide. And this is going to open up this whole editor view, which we also could have got to by clicking this little red guy right here. On this first page it's going to bring up, it's going to have these different elements for us right here. And then in the very bottom, it's got a chord chart feature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that and we're gonna go to change chord chart. What this is then gonna do is it's gonna open up the actual finder and we need to go find the actual picture for the chord chart itself. So we keep our chord charts in the Samsung T5 drive. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click this. We are then gonna go to pro charts and right here, we have all of our songs, of our chord charts right here. So as you can see, we have them in different keys and, just, and, and different versions of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find your great name. It's gonna be at the bottom in the key of A flat. So we found it right here. So now when we open this, we have all the different parts of the song. And as you can see, ProPresenter is smart and it divides up the parts of the songs right here by different verses and chorus and all of that. So we're, we've clicked on verse one, and it's the first slide. If the song has an intro, we, we wanna put the intro for the first slide right there. Then we're gonna click on it, and we're gonna click choose. And then we're gonna see that, that this little icon changed to blue. So we know that, that there's a chart there. And we're gonna do this for the entire song. So we're gonna go and we're gonna add what part of it it is. So we're gonna go back, change chord chart, your name, your, your great name A flat. We're gonna pick the corresponding chart. And this is how we put chord charts into our ProPresenter files. All right, and so for this video, we're gonna jump over to their left computer and we're gonna talk a little bit about its functions and a few other other ProPresenter stock functions. So this computer is set up the exact same way with having the toolbar, the, yeah, the view window, the library search bar, and the playlists in the graphics. The only thing that's a little bit different in this computer is what we actually put in our workspace. This computer's main video output is the back wall screen that's behind the band and behind Barrett. This screen doesn't look all that great when it has a lot of text and a lot of heavy graphics on it. So the way that we typically do is we typically like to just put a stock image, almost almost like a wallpaper, just on that screen, just to create a little bit of atmosphere and change the feel depending on what part of the service we're in. So here in the playlist window, we're, we're gonna look and I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of what we typically put on those screens. The cues work the exact same way on this computer. So we're gonna to have to make sure that all of our cues are right with the same function of right clicking, going to add cue in our stage display layout and our timers work the exact same way. So now, the only, the only, thing, the only thing that's different is if you can think back to the right computer in the scroll, that scroll had a bunch of different graphics on it. It had graphics for announcements, um, different events going on, all kinds of stuff. This screen only has one graphic, and that, and that varies depending on our series or depending on whatever was going on at, at the church. So this summer series right now, we're using this Memphis sign graphic. A good rule of thumb is anything that is not a song is going to have just a stationary video um, or graphic on it. So right here, we can see that it's just this still graphic of Memphis, but for the sermon intro video, we have the actual video up there. And but for the sermon slides, we don't 
put Barrett's actual sermon slides on that back screen. We just have the logo for whatever series we're in. And songs are a, little, are a little bit different as well. Instead of having the text in the center of the screen, we have it above, um, up here. This makes it so we can read the text over the band members. Now, the way to quickly do this is using this template tool up in the right hand corner, this little green drop down. If you click this, this has a lot of different templates for different looks in, in the actual program. ProPresenter is awesome in the sense that you can do mass changes very quickly using this tool. So we have this template right here called ICC Worship Wall, which that's what we kind of call that back screen is that wall. And if we need to change the look of the of the words very quickly up into that all, all in the top center, if we click this template, it'll lock everything up to where it's supposed to go. Now, since it was already like that, it didn't look like it did anything, but it did. And so now, one last thing we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about how to actually get that still image on the back screen. So, so if we look right here, the host welcome has got all of the standard slides in here, which we don't want all of this little text and all of that stuff on that screen because it doesn't look very good. We just want that still Memphis image. So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna highlight everything in here and we're just gonna delete it. And we're gonna start fresh. If we go down to this little plus button right here at the top of the video section, and we click add slide, this will pop up, pop up a blank black slide. What we're gonna do is we're then we're gonna go down to the graphic we want. We're gonna pull it in there and, and then we're gonna add the cues like we talked about. So this is a host welcome. So we're gonna right click and go to add cue, stage display layout. And now for this computer, we don't actually have the host cue, but we have announcements. A any cue where somebody is talking that's not an actual sermon, we're gonna use this announcement cue. We're gonna click on that and that's good. One of the things that's very cool about our setup here at ICC is that these two computers are linked. So whatever you click on the right computer, it's gonna make the left computer do. So that's why we're able to have everything linked up on Sundays. So it's very important that if we make any changes on the right computer involving songs or slide numbers, that we do it onto the left computer. Because if we don't, it's going to mess the whole flow up. And so that just concludes the way that we typically run our ProPresenter here at ICC. And like I said earlier, if you have any other questions about the program or any functions of it, please, 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 and contact your ministry leader for any questions, and they will help guide you in the right direction. All right, and now we made it through our ProPresenter videos, I'm now going to teach you how to use this computer right here, in which we use for all of our podcasts and all of our sermon audio recording. So this, this computer is linked to our soundboard in a way that anything that goes through the soundboard can be recorded in through this in, in different multi-tracks. So we use this to just have a record of our service, to record music, and then for our podcast. And to so go ahead and watch this video, and I'm going to teach you how to take Barrett's sermon audio and turn it into our Sunday morning podcast. All right, guys, and so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to take Barrett's sermon audio and how to publish it in our podcast system. So we're looking at the program Logic Pro 10 right here, which is the program that we use to record all of our multi-tracks of the entire service. So right here, we're looking at the entire service right here. So we have our actual instrument tracks, and we have Barrett's teaching track in this teal down at, down at the very bottom. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull it into the podcast. So we can't podcast all of the music audio just, just because of copyright reasons and the song not being ours, but we're completely allowed to podcast Barrett's teaching. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to file and we're going to click, um, we're going to click open or open recent. Um, open recent is where we're going to go most of the time, but in case we can't find this file, we can, we can just go to open. So open recent, we're going to click on, um, the file entitled Church Alive Podcast Template. So now it's always going to be whatever series we're in and then podcast template. Um, so when we were in Desperate Dependence um, a little bit ago this past year, it was called Desperate Dependence Podcast Template. 
Um, and whatever the next series will be, it'll be that series title podcast template. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open that file up. And now it's going to ask us, do we want to close the current file we're in before opening a new one? And we're going to click don't close just in case we have to go back to the other one and reference it. So what it's going to do is it's going to open up this template, which is going to have the intro audio, which I create. You guys will never have to worry about that because I create that. And then it has a... F um, a track for Barrett's audio and then a track for the actual um, or, or then a track for a separate speaker audio. We use this separate speaker just on the off chance Barrett has somebody give a testimony or some sort of other thing going on in the service. But I'd say a solid eight times out of ten you're just going to use this Barrett track which has got the real nice picture of Barrett right there in case you ever get confused. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back up to file we're going to click import and we're going to click import audio file. This is the best way that I've found to actually make sure I'm getting the proper audio because if we were to copy and paste Barrett's audio track, sometimes it's the correct one and other times it's not. But if we go to import and if we go to the audio folder, go to Sunday worship, we're going to find whatever day we're working on. So we're working on July 21st and then we're going to go to audio files right here and we're gonna click Barrett's teaching file a good way to make sure is sometimes the recording software will, will record a few different tracks right there just just because and a good way to make sure there's the right one is I have never seen Barrett Bowden preach for anything less than 20 minutes so there's no way that, that a two-second file is the right one but if we open this one up an hour and 58 minutes, that's about what our entire service is, so that sounds about right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click open. And it's gonna copy the file and it's gonna bring it over into Barrett's track. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our headphones and we're gonna go over here to the top right and we're gonna shrink this down a little bit just so we know really kind of what we're working with and we're able to actually kind of see the audio. Now the best thing to do with this is we're gonna go up here to our little our little timer bar right here. What we're gonna do is we need to find where Barrett's sermon actually started and ended. So what we're gonna do is, but Barrett's really, really good about turning off his mic when he's not speaking and when he is. So it's usually pretty easy to find where he starts talking by looking at the waveforms and when he and where he stops talking. Right about there. So what we're gonna do is we are going to scroll over and we're going to find right about where he kind of starts talking and if we look down in this window we can all this is just a fine tuning window where we can really find where he starts talking we're going to click play and just make sure that it's the right audio so this is so this is right where he turned on his mic so we're going to find right where he actually starts talking which is going to be right about there we're going to stop it we're going to hit the command key and then a t what this is going to do is it's going to trim the audio right there. So now, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can delete that first part because we don't need it. Then we can scroll down here to the end and we can find about where he actually says amen. So now what we're going to do is bear typically in response kind of gets kind of quiet and kind of intimate. So what, so now what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of scrub through the file and we're going to figure out where he actually ends. So right there, we can tell that he's kind of ending. So we're then gonna we're then gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit Command T. Once we click on that, we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit Command T, and it's gonna trim it again. We're gonna just delete the section right here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it pretty big again because it's easier to work with, and we're gonna just grab this whole file. We're gonna just pull it to the front. Now we don't want it to start exactly at one because we have this intro. So what I like to do is I like to make it real big and try to find a good spot to where the audio ends. So right about there, it looks good. So now, so now, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the top left corner of Barrett's audio track and we're gonna pull it down. And this is gonna add just a little fade onto, onto the beginning of his audio. This is gonna make it just a little bit cleaner sounding and just not as not as cut really, really harshly. 
as it could if we didn't do that. So then we're gonna scroll back and we're gonna find the back end. We're gonna, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna pull it back, and put a little fade. So now right there, we're done. We're done with our audio so far. So what I like to do is I like to test it, I like to play it and make sure that it's playing all the way through. So that's good. I know that that podcast intro is good. So I'm gonna just fast forward to the end of it. I'm gonna play it, hear the timing, how it ends. And that sounds great. So now what we're gonna do, and, th and this step's very important, is we're gonna take our cursor, and we're gonna put it back at one right here. And we're gonna hit Command B. Command B is gonna bring up this bouncing um, window, which bouncing is just a term for saving the actual audio project into an actual MP3. So what we're gonna do is we need to pick a start time. The start time is usually not correct, so we always need to make sure that we check that. And, and we want it to start at one, so we're just gonna put a one in there. And the ending time is normally right. Um, so that ending time is good. We wanna make sure that we're on offline because if we did it in real time, it's gonna take the 55 minutes to actually bounce it, which we don't want, like, we don't have that kind of time after the service, like we gotta get to Los Camales. Um, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit okay. And it's gonna ask, where do you wanna save it? This is very, very important step is we want to go to the audio folder Sunday worship, and we, want to, and we want to find whatever service we're working on. So we're then we're going to click on this one, and I've already done this service, so I'm going to title this one Test. And I'm going to put it right there. So now this is going to go through this whole bouncing stage, and it's going to take the audio and it's going to convert it into an actual mp3 so now while this is going on i'm going to stop the video and we're going to have a second video of what we do with the audio once it's actually done okay so now why this audio is finishing bouncing what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to actually put the audio in the podcast so, what we, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to safari we're gonna click on that and we're gonna open three different windows. We're gonna open this clover. Then we're gonna open this little guy, this subsplash. You'll get used to what these icons look like. And then we're gonna open the ICC um, media email. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna log in and we use Robbie's email for all of that stuff. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna log in the passwords should already be saved, so you shouldn't have to mess with that. We're going to let those load. And this, and I typically do this while this audio is still back here formatting, just to kind of save time. So now what this is going to do is this is going to bring up the editor to our website. So we use a company called Clover and a company called Subsplash for our website and our app. So now what we're going to do to put it on the website and use it, use it on Clover is we're going to click right here in messages this is going to bring up this player right here so now we already have july 21st in here but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click right there and it's going to add me to it's going to ask me to add a media item so now we're going to make sure so now so this is still going so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to subsplash just to save time we're going to do this a very similar thing we're going to go over to library and we're gonna click media right here. And while this is loading, we are then going to go to the last sermon in this series. So right here we have this July 21st sermon, this missional mindset. We're gonna click this, and then we're gonna go up to Church Alive, and this is gonna bring it to where it's just the actual series and not individual sermons. We're gonna click this, and we're gonna click create media item right here. So we're gonna add the title. So I'm gonna put test. I'm gonna click create. And then now it's, now it's gonna bring up this menu right here. So we're gonna add our speaker. So Barrett was the speaker today. And then it's gonna ask us for the audio file. So now we're gonna check logic and see if that's done yet. Okay. So there's nothing there, so it's done. So we're gonna go down to our finder, and we are going to 
go to where we saved it. So we're gonna go to audio, Sunday worship, July 21st, and test. What I like to do is I like to play it right here just to make sure that it's saved right. So right here, we're good. Everything's set. Um, and a good way to test this is to make sure that it's actually um, starting at the beginning of what you want. And I then like to then check the time right there too and make sure that it's the full sermon. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go to Clover and we're going to click Browse. And we're gonna find the file that we want, that test, and we're gonna click Choose. And that's gonna go ahead and that's gonna process that. So now while that's processing, we, we do the same thing in Subsplash. Go to Audio, click Test, Choose. So now the reason that we opened the ICC email was because we need to find Barrett's PowerPoint for that week. We like to put our PowerPoint slides um, in the actual podcast as well in case people wanna listen along and take their own notes. So we're gonna click Download and this is gonna download the actual file and it's gonna take a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the title into the sky. We're gonna add the speaker. So it was Barrett Bowden. And the series was, it's gonna be whatever series we're in. So right now we're in Church Alive, Book of Acts. All right, all right, you guys, we're gonna leave this right here for right now because I don't wanna actually publish this because, of, because we already published this audio. So now, we're gonna go back to Subsplash. We're gonna see how that's doing. That's good, and we're gonna go to Downloads and we're gonna see if that PowerPoint file downloaded. So it did. So we're gonna click it. And don't rush the computer. It's We're doing a lot of very powerful tasks at once, so we don't wanna push it too hard or, or, or get frustrated with it. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Print. You could also hit Command-P if you wanted. And now, so now if you go to the Layout, we're going to click three slides per page. And down, down to this little PDF, we're going to go to Save as PDF. And we're going to put this file in the same folder on the Sunday Worship in the audio that the actual sermon is, just so we don't lose it. So I'm gonna put test again. And there, and this is gonna process that, so we're gonna give that a second. So while that's going, we're gonna go back and we're gonna check on how Clover and Subsplash are doing. Okay, so Clover's good, it's done processing. Subsplash is also good, it's processing. So what we're gonna do is we're not, in Clover, we're gonna go to attachments, so we're gonna add a file. We're gonna go to the test PDF right there for our sermon slides. And same thing for this one. We're gonna to go to PDF and upload file. We're gonna click test or whatever week that actually was. And now normally what, what we would do right here is we're gonna hit publish, but because we've already published that for this week, I'm not, I'm not gonna publish it. So, so now same thing with Clover. So now it's still saving. So once that's done saving, we're gonna be able to go and save, and that's gonna publish it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna click cancel, just because we've already put that message in there, but you would normally click save right there. So what it's gonna do, is that's gonna bring up this page again. And now the most important thing to know about Clover is that as soon as you're done doing anything, you need to go to close, and then click Publish Changes. I've done it many times where I've thought I've published the actual podcast. And then I'll get a text from Robbie or Barrett later in the day that'll say, did you put the podcast up on the website? And I'll go, yeah. But what I forgot to do was I forgot to publish the changes to the actual website right there. So we can make as many edits as we want, but if we don't publish it, it's not gonna be accessible to the people actually going to the website. It's not the same thing with Subsplash, is when we do that, is everything's good, we would hit publish, and that's gonna send it right to the app. So then at that point, what I like to do, is I like to open up one more file, or one more web browser, excuse me, 
and I like to go to our actual website, and I like to check and just make sure what's actually there. So something is here, so this test file is here, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna delete that once we're done, but, but we can see that it worked and that it actually published it. And then I like to go into my app on my phone and make sure that the audio is actually there. And if anything didn't work, you can always go back and you can redo the process and get it to work the next time. Um, so thank you guys for listening and watching. I know that, know that this video was a long one and this whole series was a long one, but this is how we take our audio from Sunday mornings and turn it into our podcast. All right, and so that concludes our media training videos for here at ICC. And if you have any more questions on anything involving the media team, you can contact your ministry leaders. And I'm super thankful and excited for you guys and then this next season ahead.